Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Mr. Mark Parisi. Um, if he looks familiar to you, you've probably seen him on television. Uh, he's a very nice gentleman, and uh, we've been trying for a few weeks now to, to get him on the show, and seems like there's one technical glitch after another, and I think we've worked that out. How are you doing, Mr. Parisi? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. So tell everybody a little bit about yourself, you know, like where you grew up and all that good stuff. Well, I grew up in Syracuse, New York. And it's in upstate New York, and I went to Syracuse University mm -hmm. um, until 94. Then I graduated, and then I moved to Miami on a whim because I finished college in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And then in August, I moved to Miami just after the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a younger kid away and lived, lived on Miami Beach and was a younger kid away for like three years. And then all of a sudden, Time passes quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was it three years. It was three years, and oh my God, time passed so quickly. And then all of a sudden, I moved off the beach, and then I got a job at Outback Steakhouse, and then from there I went to Grand Bay Club. Um, the Grand Bay Club is a five-star resort. Okay. And it, it became the Grand Bay Ritz Carlton. And I managed the Grand Bay for like I don't know three years or four years and then I moved to Starbucks because um, uh, one, one of the regional guys from Starbucks was always in the Grand Bay Club and he said, oh, you know, why don't you go to Starbucks in Miami International Airport? And then I said, no, no, thank you. And then he, he was, he was like, how many? <laughs> For like two years. Oh my gosh. So then I went to Starbucks and then I, I, um, yeah, and then I, I went as an assistant manager, and then I moved up into management because I was an assistant. Then I, I managed two stores and then three stores and then burned out. Oh boy! Because three stores, it was too much. It was too much. So yeah. then I became an actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I became an actor, and then, and in in Miami in two thousand three. Um, the economy was good. I mean, and acting was flowing. Um, I got a job uh, at um, on Transfer to Two, CSI Miami, National Lampoon's, the Fox News Network, and a bunch of infomercials and commercials. And then all of a sudden, in 2006, the economy changed again. <laughs> so yeah, it's weird. And then I don't know. It's I, I get good jobs, and then they last for like a year or two years, and then nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh! So it's weird. So um, you know, I, it's a, um, I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, I I was watching the the clip of you on TLC, and oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that that was very interesting. I mean, what was was that like? Just a a, a I don't know. Was it just kind of a thing you you did, or is that really how you are? No, the thing is, um, when I when I left Miami, I moved to Los Angeles. Uh -huh. I broke up. Well, I separated with my partner, and I I sold. He and I sold the house. Uh huh. So I made a hundred thousand dollars, and he made a hundred thousand dollars, and he moved to Atlanta. And then I moved to Los Angeles. And then all of a sudden, um, someone told me about healthy studies. And so I, I, I was investigating it. And I didn't have a job. So I did healthy studies. <laughs> and I made money. <laughs> wow. And I, I made money. And then at Profil Institute, I did a study for $10,000. It's an um, it's in person, so I, I checked in, and then 30 days later, they gave me $10,000. <laughs> oh, 
Wow. And then I went to and then I went to West Coast and and then I would I was doing spinal taps for sixty five hundred every every six months two two spinal taps every six months uh. for sixty five hundred <laughs> no it, no you know what it's you know what it it didn't hurt after after the third time it did not hurt wow <laughs> and then I I did and then I did studies in Glendale as well. And then once once I did this, once I did the study in Glendale, I went to Profil again, and they didn't check. You know, they they, they used to not check, and now they check. <laughs> and now um, healthy studies are like um, how do I say? A lot of people now are doing healthy studies. Back then, in two thousand six. They weren't doing healthy studies. Okay. So and then when I left Los Angeles, because the economy was getting slow, mm -hmm. and I was on the show Terriers for like five years, and I was on the show No Offense Crackwood with Ron Jeremy, Gilbert Godfrey, Isaac from Lovo, and then I did different things like I did events in Las Vegas. So I decided to move to Las Vegas and then I got a regular job because the economy was changing. So I got a regular job. <laughs> no offense, I got a regular job. <laughs> right. And then, yeah, and then a year later, TLC called me. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I've been in Las Vegas for a year and you never called me. Now all of a sudden, you called me? <laughs> and then they, they said to me, um, they wanted to know about the te testicular study. Right. That's the one and, I got saw the clip of. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, so then I talked about the, the testicular study because I, I, I was really going to donate one testicle and they would replace it with another one. And then every month, I go into the clinic, and then I masturbate, and then I give them a sample. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and it was thirty. It was thirty-five thousand dollars. And the thing is, thirty-five thousand dollars is thirty. Is a, no offense. It's a lot of money. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of money. Right. Hey, some people say they give their left nut for thirty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, and then um, once the TLC hit, um, I was all over the internet. And then the doctors called me, and then I did podcasts, and then radio shows called me, and then nothing happened. And then oh. I had to show. <laughs> Oh my god. And then oh and then um and then um I I do you you I, I used to do UFC fights. Oh wow UFC fights and then I I was in a born identity and I do a lot of UFC fights. I mean not a participant, but I was um like um a participant, like I walked the people in. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then so and then I'm getting back into acting. I did supermarket sweeps, sweeps, and then American Ninja War. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, and then and then and then the pandemic happened. <laughs> yeah, and then, there goes another wrench into the works, right? Yeah, that's the thing. And then um, like eight years ago. I couldn't talk and I filed for disability and I was mm -hmm. fighting for disability and I finally went to court like after three years, like that now it's like six or seven years ago. And the judge finally granted my disability because I couldn't talk. Right. So I worked part time for NBC and then I do other things, cash jobs. And um, how do I say? Disability covers my rent, my phone bill, and my power bill. 
and then I can work 20 hours a week, and then I, I report it to disability because I don't want to have any problems. Right, right, right. Yeah. So and then, you, huh? Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish what you're saying. No, go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, well, NBC is a great company, huh? I was going to ask you, I mean, you you had a stroke and then you weren't able to talk. I mean, how how are you able to come back from that? Well, the thing is, um, I was a kid waiter, so um, I just carry trays, and then I work conventions. So I just hold, held a sign, and it was a real monitor. So I couldn't, I couldn't talk. So, and then yeah, I mean, and I I worked for Dakota for like nine years. Mm -hmm. And then I got a job summer times at Calabunga Bay because Calabunga Bay is, is a water park in Henderson. Then I worked from um, April 1st until October 1st. I worked there for three years for Blue Green. And then Blue Green decided not to do Calabunga Bay. Then I got the job at NBC. So my spirit guides are telling me Move on. <laughs> right. Yeah. So did you did you have to like um, do certain exercises or something with your voice in order to learn to talk again? Well, no. The thing is, um, I, I I've always worked out. I just I just had to modify my working out because on um, my writing hand, like I couldn't lift it. Like I can have I can like hold it up here, but it, it's becoming normal, you know? Mm -hmm. And then my speech was like, mm, you know, it's like, I, I tried to mumble something, you know? God, that had to be difficult. And then um, I, I should have, well, the thing is, when I had the show, I, because I didn't have health insurance, so then, then um, how do I say? Um, they gave me a, uh, uh, how do I say? Um, a doctor to go to. Mm -hmm. But but she told me she told me cat and dog. I'm like, no offense, cat and dog. My, you know what? You know, it's like no. <laughs> so I learned on my own. You know. Uh huh. I, I just I just trusted my spirit guides, you know, and then that's it. And then they led me along, you know. And then when Calabunga, when Blue Green decided not to Calabunga Bay, all of a sudden NBC came up, <laughs> and and now the Raiders are coming. So I got a job with the Raiders. <laughs> oh wow, that ought to be exciting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm excited because the Raiders, you know, the Raiders are everywhere you know oh yeah oh yeah and Allegiant and stadium is great i mean it's brand new and there's going to be concerts and football from unlv so yeah oh, man you even got the the college team playing there huh yeah oh that's pretty yeah, sweet UNLV, yeah so did I, I, huh I was going to ask you, how has your spirituality contributed to you coming back from, you know, what you had to go through with your stroke and everything else? Well, this, my, my spirits have, have been guiding me since I was born. Mm -hmm. And then um, because I used to be Catholic a long, long, long time ago. And then all of a sudden I said, this is nonsense, you know? And my brother's Catholic and Catholic Irish and blah, blah, blah. And I said, that's fine. Have a nice day, you know? Right. But my spirits, my spirits have guided me. My spirits have, have guided me when I, when I had the stroke and then when I, how do I say? Before I had the stroke, my spirits were telling me, slow down, slow down, slow down because I worked at Chetty's Coffee and then at Costco every weekend, so I didn't have any days off. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't listen to 
The only time I didn't listen to them, I had the stroke. Yeah. So then I, so then I totally listened to my spirits, you know. And how do I say um? The spirits, they don't, they don't talk to me like you and I talk to me. Mm-hmm. They, they give me signs. So, for an example, sometimes um, in my apartment, something's out of place or, or something's not right. And then I stop to think about it, and then the spirits are trying to tell me something. So then, no offense, I listen. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Huh? No, no, I was just, I was agreeing with you. That's, uh, you know, spirituality seems to play a big part in people getting their lives back on track. Because uh, yeah. I know that, that has helped me quite a bit through uh, my journey from, right. you know, I, I was into drinking and drugs and all that kind of stuff. And, and when I turned, right. to, when I turned to spirituality, then my life got better when I kind of moved away from it, then things got worse. And I mean, you know how it is, even right. if you are a spiritual person, things are going to happen in your life that, that go wrong. But when you have that right. belief, then you can handle those things better. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I do no harm to none. And, and the thing is people try to go against me. And they try to backstab me. And the funny thing is it backfires on them. And I say to them, have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> and then it backfires on them <laughs> repeatedly for eternity, you know. And then my spirits, t- my spirits tell me, you know, be careful about so-and-so. Be careful about so-and-so. Be careful about the job. And then just be cautious. So then I listen, you know. Mm-hmm. Because no offense there are a lot of like no offense the christian conservative coalition the watchtower and the catholics they try to play games you know and i don't pay attention to to them yeah yeah i mean no offense (laughs) when when it comes to um you know like spirit guides and and that belief um and, and you you hear those warnings and you right. tell that to other people, they they think, oh man, this dude's off his rocker. But I've seen it time and time again with other people that claim the same thing, and they they're never wrong. <laughs> it, for, it's amazing. For, for good, huh? It's yeah, amazing. For a good example. Yeah, for a good example, I was gonna buy a condo, right? I was ready to buy a condo, and my spirits were telling me. It's not a good time. It's not a good time. It's not a good time. Save, 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 save. So I listened. And then the pandemic happened two months ago. And then I said, oh, wow, that's why, <laughs> you know? See there? You listened and, and, and you, you're ready. Yeah. And then the prices are dropping. Now, now I'm buying a condo. Because the, the prices are dropping in Las Vegas because the prices were overpriced. So, yeah, I'm just buying a one bedroom, one bath on Eastern Avenue and then for 68000 and that's it. I mean, I, I, I only have one partner, one dog, so I'm only, only going to buy one condo, and that's it. And then I work for NBC and the Raiders. Matt, wow, that's that's got to be cool working at N- NBC and working for the Raiders. So what are, what are you yeah, doing? I mean, what are you doing at NBC? Well, the, NBC is the pilot season. Uh-huh. So when you go on the strip, I'm a runner. So when when they go on the strip, you run into the recruiters, mm-hmm. and the recruiters ask you, do you have an out of state ID, and first you have to say yes. And they have to show you your out-of-state ID. Mm -hmm. And then they ask you a few questions. Have you done this before? Blah, blah, blah. Have you done it um, within six months? And then they say, okay. And then they say, runner. And I I walk the people in. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. 
All right. So tell me a little bit about your acting experience and working on those television shows. What was that like? Well, that, I mean, I love CSI Miami, National Lampoon. Um, my favorite show was, no offense, um, Ron Jeremy was Crackwood. Because <laughs> um, I, I got to meet Ron Jeremy, mm -hmm. you know? And then porn stars were all over the set for one month. So oh, wow. when, when, when I lived in Los Angeles, I went outside of Los Angeles for one month and Ron Jeremy paid me after one month. So I was happy. <laughs> and he, he, you know, it's like, wow, it's like, and I was a howdy duty sheriff, uh, a, a lovable guy, a howdy duty sheriff. And then there were porn stars that were others on set. And then there was other actors on set. And Gilbert Godfrey was on set. And then, um, Isaac from the love Isaac from the love boat was a bartender, and then Gilbert Godfrey was uh, the rabbi, oh my and gosh. Ron, Ron Jeremy was the priest. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, huh? <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> no, you know, you know, you know what? He's funny because when he was when he was talking about um when he was preaching the Bible. When he, when he opened the Bible, there are porn star pictures in the Bible. Oh, no. So, Father Jeremiah. Oh, my gosh. So, huh? I said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, and then Crockett was on, I think it was on Showtime for, like, three years. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, and then I was on Terriers. I was a, a, a lots of days to a cop every other week. And then it was based out of San Diego. Uh -huh. And it was canceled after five years. So, so then I had to get a job. Hey, but five years is a good run. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And then um, when I first started acting in Miami, um, Alan Jacoby, she told me um, to get acting experience because I'm going to bump you up because I, I was originally an extra. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, Alan Jacoby told me, if you get acting, I'll bump you up because she was the casting director. Uh -huh. So then I said, okay, that's fine. And then she bumped me up and bumped me up. <laughs> and it was good, you know, and then... So I can't say enough about Ellen Jacoby, you know, because she's a, a great person, mm -hmm. you know? And then after like three years or four years, the economy in Miami changed. Um, price gouging and the, the movies were not coming to Miami anymore. They were, they were going elsewhere. They were going to Atlanta. They were going to Louisiana because price, price, Prices in Miami, they became expensive because they, they knew the film, industry, the film industry was coming, so they gouged everything. Yeah. <laughs> so then, so then they said, "Okay, we're leaving Miami." <laughs> so now Miami is horrible. No offense, no offense. Right, right. Yeah, I know a lot of stuff is done in Atlanta, and a lot of stuff done in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. I know Tyler Perry's in Atlanta. Yeah. Cause um um I watch his blog. You know, and then I think Tyler Perry is great because of, no offense because of Medea. I, <laughs> I, 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 I usually watch Medea films, you know? Oh yeah, I love those. She, yeah, she was funny, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Louisiana, no offense. Um, I know people in Louisiana because I li lived in Louisiana for like six months. Uh -huh. And the thing is, Louisiana, um, I, I went to Louisiana to help rebuild houses after Hurricane Katrina. Right. And then, no offense, 
the Brennans, the Brennan family, and I had a run-in. So, because I was a gay guy. Uh-huh. And they wanted, no offense, they, they wanted me to marry one of their daughters. <laughs> And I didn't want to marry her. <laughs> no offense, you know. It's like I have a partner. <laughs> and the thing is, um, I know the Brennan for a long time. Uh huh. Because in '94, I went to Louisiana <laughs> for this guy named Robert Revere. He was the owner of the Bourbon Pub. Okay. And he thought. I was I was an attractive guy, and he was an attractive guy, mm -hmm. but I didn't like him in the same way. And he thought he he thought that that I liked him, so I said no 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 no, you know it's like no. Uh -huh. So yeah, I mean, and then I left Louisiana, and 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 Robert Bear told me, don't ever come back to Louisiana. I'll get you. <laughs> oh no. And then the Brennan said the same thing. Don't ever come back to Louisiana. I'll get you. <laughs> wow. So uh -huh. being being gay, do you find a lot of opposition in different places that you go? Or is you, does it seem like it's more accepting nowadays than what it was, you know, in the older days? No, it, it's more accepting now. And the thing is, um, in 94, it was becoming acceptable because I lived on South Beach. So no offense, everyone at South Beach was gay. Mm -hmm. Literally everyone was gay. And then in 2000, no offense, the Christian Conservative Coalition came, the Watcher people came, the Catholics, the Catholics were coming in droves, like every month. <laughs> so Miami became horrible. <laughs> Mm. And I, I got older, you know, I got older. Yeah. Well, I have, yeah. I have two children that are gay and um, okay. they, they don't really run into the opposition and, and stuff. Right. Um, you know, and I, I know when I was a kid, that was like very taboo to be right, sexual. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was not really accepted back then. And I, you know, having children that are gay i i i still worry about them but i don't right. see the same prejudices that we saw back then yeah the thing is um i don't i don't tell you whether i'm gay if if people ask me i say why do you want to know right right and then cuz i mind my own business and i do no harm to none so if you know my partner, well, I don't have a partner now. I'm getting another partner. Because I go in cycles. <laughs> I get a partner for like seven years or eight years, and then they, we break up. <laughs> and then I get another partner for like five years, and then they break up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm 52 years old. So now I'm getting, next time I get a partner, he's going to be, be my partner for life. Because I'm 52 years old. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I mean, like, I'm going to be, no offense, I'm going to be 60 in a couple, like, I don't know, eight years. Right, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So what, what, uh, what kind of acting are you looking to do in the future? Or are you done with that part of it? No, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna act again, but um, on a reality TV show. Okay. Because I'm gonna be on a reality because my personality is outgoing, you know, and my spirit guides are outgoing. So yeah. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna continue acting for like five more years, and then I'm gonna retire. Because okay. I'll, I will be like 58 years old and no offense, it, it's a younger game, you know? True, true. And then like 58 years old, like, oh, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. So I got a couple more years left. Yeah, I hear you. But you only, yeah, got, you only got two years on me. 
How? I said, you only got two years on me. So, uh, okay. You, you're not that old, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, the thing is, um, I'm financially set, you know, like, um, I save money. Uh huh. You know, I'm on disability, but I still save money because of the pandemic and then other things. I have investments. And I have $250,000, so I'm going to buy a condo for $65,000. $65,000 is it's a one-bedroom, one-bath, only one-bedroom, only one-bath. So, so, and I have only one dog. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean. What's the cost of living like there? Now in Las Vegas, it's inexpensive. Okay. I mean, Las Vegas is inexpensive now. It's going to get less expensive because of the pandemic. My, my apartment now, I pay $750 a month. I sign a year lease. So $750, it's good. It's in a guarded, gated community. Oh, that's so nice. when I go inside, um, I say hi to the, the guy at the guard gate. And then when I go into the community, I have to know the password. So I punch in the password and then go into the complex. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then the price went up for $50 this year because I, I signed another lease. The year before last last year, it was only like like seven hundred dollars. <laughs> right. So it, Las Vegas is an inexpensive community. And then um, with the pandemic now, the prices are dropping. It's going to be um, the, um. How do I say? It's going to be less than what I pay now. So next year, when I'm buying a condo, but for example, next year, the property may be $700 because the prices are dropping mm. because of the, cul the culinary, culinary union are okay. basically unemployed right now. Yeah. Well, you like, know, I've, like, I've kind of looked for the prices to drop here. I mean, I, I live close to Austin. And right. I mean, outside of Austin, it's not quite as expensive as when you go into Austin. But, right. uh, you know, with the, you know, the economy being like it is, you think that maybe the prices would drop because, I mean, there's not that many people uh, yeah. working as there were before. Right. But let's let's hope that the economy improves pretty quickly. Yeah, Las the Las Vegas economy, they they're saying that it's gonna take two years. Yeah. But um people are coming to Las Vegas because of the casinos. <laughs> yeah. You know? People from California come to Las Vegas every weekend. So they're waiting. The casinos are, are waiting to open. I bet they you know, are. Huh? I said I bet they are. Yeah, because um they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have to wear a face mask and every other slot machines are gonna not be active, but slot machines are I play the slot machines, no offense, and I win. Every full moon I play like I play 25 cents and buy like like five minutes pass or 10 minutes pass, I win. Oh, wow. And then I get money. Every month I get money. And then last time I won, it was $3,100. Oh, wow. And then I was, I, I was working for NBC and then I, I went to work early, and then all of a sudden, I said to myself, hmm, and that, the slot machine was calling me. <laughs> <laughs> and my spirit guides were telling me, play the slot machine. And then I had an hour or so, I played for like 10 minutes, and then boom, it hit. 
Wow. So I got $3,125. Man, you need to buy my lottery tickets for me. No, the thing is, um, there's no lottery in Las Vegas. Well, you can come in here Nevada. to Texas and buy my tickets for me. Huh? I said you can come to Texas and buy my tickets for me. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> hey, you know what? I don't see. I'm just playing the full moon. On the, the day of the full moon and the day before the full moon. Just play the numbers. Have, play every number the same. And then you win. The thing is, um, every, everyone tells me I'm lucky. I was born lucky. And then because I work first, first and foremost, I work. You know, I don't, I, I only gamble on the full moon. So, and, and, and I, I only want because it's the spirit guide, the spirit guides tell me, what do you want, Mark? And I say I want a, I want a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, and then usually within two months I get the money. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so I'm lucky. I hear you. you no. Know? My brother is lucky in a different way. You know, my my older brother, his name is Tony. He's a restaurant manager as well. He has a great job at Taco Bell. And then he doesn't gamble. He doesn't play lottery, but he gets hours. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's lucky at that. You know, gotcha. he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, you know. Yeah, I hear you. Well, believe it or not, our time is up. Okay. So, um, if you, any, yeah, if you have any questions, call me or email me and I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. Okay. Will do. Okay. So, if people want to follow you or on social media, how they get a hold of you? Well, yeah, on um, Twitter, um, just Mark Parisi PVT because private, uh huh, and then on Facebook and then on LinkedIn, the same thing. Okay. So, they're Mark all the Parisi, same. Yeah. Mark Parisi private. Okay. Do you do you have Instagram? No. The, the thing the thing is um I don't like Instagram because um because of Facebook. <laughs> no offense. I like Twitter and LinkedIn. Okay. I just post on Facebook um that things that are happening on the strip and and the pilot season. Okay. Because I post I post on Facebook. For NBC. All right, then. And we'll be yeah. looking for you to be in something else pretty soon. Yeah, the thing is, um, when the economy gets back to normal, I, I can go to Los Angeles again, you know, and, and my speech will be, will be re returned better. And my writing hand, oh, well, because my writing hand, I can sign an autograph. But I can't write. But it, the, the autograph doesn't, the autograph is fine. Gotcha. So once my speech becomes better, I'm going back into commercials and start like that. And then I'm going to be in another commercials and then maybe another, another TLC show. Who knows, you know? Right. Well, I hope the best for you, man. Oh, yeah. And I really appreciate you being on the show. Okay. And uh, and uh, we, we'll be looking forward to seeing you in, in commercials and TV and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link for Supermarket Suites as well. Um, because I I do I did Supermarket Suites in Las Vegas. Uh huh. So when the when it comes on, I'll send you a link. All right. Well, I'll be looking for that, and we'll post post it. Huh. And we will post that as well. Yeah, and then um, can you send me a link as well from the interview? Yes, I will definitely do that. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Well, thank you for being on. And uh, like I said, we wish the best for you. Thank you. Have a good day, okay? All right. You too. And thank you all for joining us. Take care. <laughs>